What did soldiers eat? Throughout history, the logistical demand of keeping an army supplied with food has been a key consideration for military commanders. Battles and even entire campaigns have been lost on the basis of an underfed army. Nowadays, there are multiple methods by which food can be delivered to troops quickly, as well as innovative methods of food preservation and storage, which ensure that the food they receive is highly nutritious and varied. However, this has not always been the case. Before mechanized transportation and, in some cases, the advent of proper roads, maintaining regular food rations for an army, especially one that was on the move, was a much more challenging task. Ancient armies either had to carry their supplies with them, live off the land, purchase or steal from local populations, maintain often lengthy supply lines, or, assuming they were lucky enough to come from a civilization with naval abilities, remain close to the sea in order to be supplied. Traditional methods of food preservation, such as curing, pickling and salting, could keep meats and vegetables edible for long periods of time. But nevertheless, food was often monotonous, poor quality and lacking in nutrition. Surviving records of what daily life was like for the average soldier in the earliest known armies are limited, but some information has been passed down to us. In the early days of ancient Egypt, for example, one contemporary writer describes military rations as being meager and unpleasant, while other sources tell us that each soldier was responsible for carrying his own supply of both food and water. As time passed, the life of an Egyptian soldier, at least as far as food was concerned, seems to have become a little easier and we know they were consuming a variety of vegetables, meats, fruits and legumes. In ancient Greece, the average hoplite had a diet consisting of barley groats, salt fish, salt mixed with thyme, olives, onions, along with whatever else he could loot or forage. He was responsible for his own food, which he would get from his domestic stores or the markets. Hoplites were accompanied by a slave who carried the rations along with cooking utensils and bedding. They were also known to carry iron spits, which could be used to grill meat. For land campaigns, the hoplite was ordered to bring three days' worth of supplies. Once these provisions had run out, they would resupply in a city. If it was a friendly or neutral city, they would be able to use their pay to buy more supplies in the market, but if they were in an enemy city, the army would forage their food supplies. This was one of the reasons that land campaigns frequently began in early summer, when the enemy grain was ripe but not yet harvested. Of all the armies of the ancient world, the Roman army was arguably the best fed. At the extent of the empire, Roman territory covered an area in excess of 5 million square kilometers. Keeping troops supplied over the vast distances of the Roman Empire was a huge task, but a skill for organization was a major factor behind the success of Roman expansion. We know that from at least the 3rd century BC, Roman soldiers received a standard grain ration on a set day. Although there is a little variation in ancient sources regarding the Roman military diet, seemingly dependent on the location of the army and the goods available, it can be broadly stated that a Roman soldier could expect to receive the following rations grain, meat, which was mainly salt pork, vegetables, such as lentils and beans, cheese, salt, sour wine, and olive oil. Cassius Dio wrote about the Icenian revolt of AD 60 or 61, quoting Queen Boudicca as saying that without needed bread and wine and oil, Roman soldiers would perish, whereas the Britons could survive on only grass, roots, and water. The quote itself is almost certainly apocryphal, but it serves to highlight the comparatively high standard of food that could be expected within the Roman army. Whilst garrisoned, a Roman soldier could rely on a centralized kitchen for the cooking of his meals. But on campaign, each contubinium, a squad of eight men, was responsible for preparing their own food. The grain ration was typically used in one of two ways, either as bread, which required a lengthy milling process before being baked on an open hearth, or, if they were in a hurry, as pulls a type of porridge made from the raw grain. When the army needed to move particularly quickly, soldiers were supplied with a pre-made ration called buchelatum. This was a form of twice-baked bread that is now more commonly known as either hardtack or ship's biscuit. Hardtack has never been known for its flavor or texture, but its ability to keep for long periods of time means that it has remained a staple of military rations right up to the modern era. 
Although the armies of medieval Europe were, in general, not so well organized as the ancient Romans, a common foot soldier could usually expect to have some basic supplies provided, especially at the beginning of a campaign. When Edward III arrived in France in 1346, at the start of a campaign that would culminate in the Battle of Crecy, he brought with him large quantities of mutton, beef, and pork, both salted and fresh, cheese, peas, and beans, oat and wheat cakes, bread, and dried fish. There are also surviving orders from Henry V telling English bakers and brewers to increase their output in the build-up to the Agincourt campaign in 1415. On a lengthy campaign though, even the best prepared army could not possibly hope to carry all the provisions they would need and soldiers were often forced to either purchase supplies from Camp Vettelers or look to the surrounding countryside for food. Throughout the Peninsular War of 1808 to 1814, the men of the Duke of Wellington's army were supposed to receive daily rations consisting of one pound of hardtack, one pound of meat, which was usually beef, and one third of a pint of spirits, which was most often rum. On occasion, these rations were either supplemented or substituted by other goods, although these were not always an improvement. Colonel Jonathan Leach described one fortnight long march where the only rations distributed consisted of meat and a combination of bran, coarse flour, and straw. The standard ration fell far short of providing the calorific needs of a soldier on campaign, and, to make matters worse, the delivery of supplies was often unreliable. To make up this deficit, soldiers had two choices, either purchasing their own supplies or plundering them. The first of these was not always possible, as the pay of a rank and file soldier, even when it was on time, was extremely low, especially after stoppages. As for the second, Wellington, in an attempt to maintain discipline within the army, issued orders declaring plundering punishable by death. This sentence was only rarely given, usually in cases where a soldier had used excessive violence. But men who were caught still faced other forms of discipline, such as having their alcohol ration stopped. Despite the risks, looting was widespread and officers, sympathetic to their men's hunger, often looked the other way including, on occasion, Wellington himself. While actual starvation was only rarely a risk, the food shortages were dire enough to prompt one former soldier to write that on joining the army, a man should have parted with half his stomach. Although French soldiers received similar daily rations to their British counterparts, only a few days' supply were carried at a time. Napoleon liked his armies to be quick-moving and self-sufficient, and his men were encouraged to forage or requisition goods. Looting occurred frequently enough that the tactic became known as la machrode, and although this was often forbidden, it was not unusual for a blind eye to be turned. This was a high-risk strategy that worked well for troops in highly populated areas, where goods could easily be purchased, or fertile countryside with plenty of food, but opened up the potential for the army to be left stranded without sustenance. The spectacular failure of Napoleon's Russian campaign, widely regarded as one of the greatest military disasters of all time, can be blamed largely on poor logistics, a lack of supplies, and the Russian scorched earth tactics, which eventually led to the death by starvation of tens of thousands of men. It is interesting to note that the basic diet of Western armies changed very little over the period covered. Salted meat, bread or grain, legumes, salt, cheese, beer and wine, with a few variations from army to army, remained the mainstays of the military diet for centuries. This was not because of military planning, but rather demonstrates the types of food that were available in the Western world and suitable for life on campaign. In the early 1800s, there were major advances in food preservation. The development of canning revolutionized military rationing and, although change was slow to begin with, was ultimately the first step towards the more varied diet of modern soldiers. Modern Military Rations From the Tin Can to the MRE In 1795, during the French Revolution, the French government was concerned about the problems they were having feeding their army. They offered a 12,000 franc prize for anyone who could come up with a new method of food preservation. It would be 15 years before the prize was finally claimed in 1810 by Nicolas Appert, a maker of fruit conserves. By 1804, Appert had worked out that multiple foodstuffs could be preserved for months or even years if they were placed in an absolutely airtight glass container and then heated in boiling water for several hours. Although he had discovered the technique behind canning production, Appert's choice of container never really became widespread, 
as glass was simply too heavy and prone to breakage. The inventor of the tin can was Philippe Girard in 1810. However, it was Brian Duncan, John Hall, and John Gamble who would allow it to become available to the masses, from feeding the Royal Navy to even later Arctic expeditions. Girard had asked a London broker, Peter Durand, to patent his process and it was bought for a thousand pounds by Duncan, Hall, and Gamble in 1812. Duncan then set up another company with his business associates and established the first major commercial canning plant at Fort Place, Bermondsey, in 1813. This firm was to later merge with the now familiar company of Cross and Blackwell. America's canning industry was considerably slower to take off, and the new technology was not adopted into military use for some time. The American Civil War, fought between the years 1861 and 1865, did see some canned goods being made, available to certain sections of Union soldiers. These were only available on a small scale, however, and didn't form a major element of the common rations. This all began to change in the late 1800s, when the U.S. military started to provide its soldiers with individual ration packs. The first version of these was named the 1878 Travel Ration. It was specifically designed for use when the soldiers were in transit, and so it was designed to be both small and compact, and easy to eat in a short amount of time. Importantly, it contained both canned meat and vegetables. In 1896, this version was followed by an emergency ration, which consisted of canned chocolate cakes, meat and flour cakes, as well as dried bread. As the name would suggest, this was only designed for emergency scenarios and would only keep a soldier fed for a limited amount of time. It also was only to be opened on the orders of an officer. By World War I, canned goods now made up the bulk of the standard U.S. military ration. Throughout the war, the U.S. Army used three basic ration types, these being the iron ration, the trench ration, and the reserve rations. The iron ration was an emergency ration consisting of three three-ounce cakes made from beef bouillon powder and parched and cooked wheat. These came along with three one-ounce bars of chocolate and small packets of salt and pepper. All of the items were sealed in a small tin can and were easily carried in a soldier's kit. The trench ration consisted of various canned meats and fish which were sealed in a large tin crate and covered in canvas. This, to some extent, protected the contents from contamination in the case of a gas attack. The third variant, the reserve ration, was far more substantial than the others. It contained meat, usually corned beef or sometimes fresh bacon, two cans of hard bread, otherwise known as hardtack, a few packets of coffee, salt and sugar, and finally a small cigarette ration. This often provided the soldiers with a short but well-needed morale boost. The period between world wars allowed the U.S. Army to develop a more comprehensive set of rations, having learnt during World War I what had worked well and what could be improved upon. The process of refining the rations continued throughout World War II. Over the period of the conflict, five standard rations were utilized as well as several highly specialized ones that were designed for use in specific geographical areas. These included the jungle and mountain rations. The five main rations used were the A ration, a garrison ration that was fresh, refrigerated, or frozen food that was prepared in the cookhouse or a field kitchen. The B ration, a field ration that was prepared using any type of canned food. The K ration, an individual ration used by fast-moving assault troops and only designed for short-term use. The D ration, which was an emergency ration that contained a concentrated chocolate bar that was specially designed to have a high calorie content. The resulting bar was so hard that soldiers often had to use a knife to shave slices off of it rather than simply taking a bite and risk damaging their teeth. Then there was the C ration. This was arguably the most famous U.S. military ration, and one that formed the basis of military rations for the next few decades. It consisted of pre-cooked and ready-to-eat individual canned meals, and a daily ration contained six cans, of which three were M units, or meat rations, and three were B units, or bread and dessert. The original menu was only limited to three options for the main course, these being meat and beans, meat and vegetable stew, and meat and potato stew. The B unit, or bread and dessert section, contained high-calorie crackers, energy and sugar tablets, and beverage mixes, either coffee, bouillon powder, or a synthetic lemon drink. 
By the end of the war, several alterations had been made to the sea ration. More variety was added to the M units, including meat and spaghetti, and chicken and vegetable dishes. Cold drink mixes were also added, and the energy tablets were replaced with a variety of different candies. In addition to food, the sea ration also contained an accessory pack that provided soldiers with a few basic necessities. The contents changed over the time the sea ration was in use, but included items such as chewing gum, cigarettes, toilet paper, sugar, salt, water purification tablets, a can opener, and matches. In 1958, the sea ration began to be phased out and was replaced with the MCI, or Meal Combat Individual. In essence, this was largely just a slightly improved sea ration with an additional menu item. In fact, it was so similar that among the troops it continued to be referred to as a sea ration. Along with the M unit and B unit, there was now a separate dessert option called the D unit. The MCI was the primary ration issued to troops during the Vietnam War. It was here that the limitations of this type began to present themselves. A single day supply for each soldier consisted of a generous 12 cans. This came at a cost, however. They were heavy, noisy, and difficult to pack, meaning that oftentimes men would opt to leave parts of the ration behind and didn't receive their full daily calorie intake that they required to function correctly. The Vietnamese, by contrast, relied on rice as their primary food source, which was comparatively far easier and more lightweight to transport and prepare. The U.S. military's current standard individual field ration, the MRE, or Meal Ready to Eat, was introduced in 1986 and was originally created to tackle the shortcomings of its predecessor, the MCI. MREs are lightweight, easy to carry, and most importantly don't come packaged in heavy and cumbersome tin cans. Instead, the perishable goods are first thermostabilized and then sealed in a laminate plastic retort pouch. This allows for the goods to remain consumable for very long periods and be able to withstand harsher climates. The MRE was the first ration that was specifically developed with taste and variety in mind. The military establishment realized that simply providing men with their basic nutritional requirements was often not enough. Good quality food that varied in content was recognized as being important for morale, as well as for ensuring that soldiers ate the entire ration, thus meeting their full energy requirements. MREs contained the following key items. A main course, side dishes, crackers or bread, spreads such as jam and peanut butter, candy, dessert, drink mixes, and seasoning. Just like the earlier rations, there's also an accessory pack which includes basics such as matches, toilet paper, and chewing gum. Since the MRE's introduction, it's remained in a continual state of development, with new menu items being added and unpopular ones discarded. Perhaps the most substantial change to the MRE, though, was in 1990 with the introduction of the flameless ration heater. This is a small pad that produces a chemical exothermic reaction when it comes into contact with water, creating an intense heat to warm up packaged food. This makes it possible for a soldier to enjoy a hot meal when out in the field without the risk of an open flame. When the ration was first introduced, there were 12 main courses. This has since been expanded to 24. The new choices include vegetarian options and food from different cultural backgrounds, such as halal options. An example of a current MRE menu is a vegetarian crumble with pasta in taco-style sauce, one wet pack of fruit, a nutrient bar, peanut butter, crackers, plain nuts, a drink mix, a coffee mix, and a bottle of seasoning, often hot sauce. The modern ration has been refined over many years and various conflicts to be both nutritionally balanced and contain all the calories a soldier requires when in the field with one MRE bag containing approximately 1,250 calories. In addition to this, the MRE has been designed to fulfill all operational requirements. This means that they remain shelf-stable for a minimum of three years or nine months in warmer climates. They are also highly durable and have the ability to survive non-parachute drops of 100 feet and parachute drops of 1,250 feet. With all these elements considered, a soldier can eat a full, nutritious meal wherever they find themselves.